This episode of the Demonic Compendium contains spoilers for the following games. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to a triplicated new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. As we get into this time of the year, summer is starting to die down. But if I step outside, that sun is blazing as strong as ever. So I hope you're all ready to know who we can blame some of that on, because today, we're talking about Yatagarasu. The Yatagarasu, or Eight Span Crow as it translates to, is a notable figure in Japanese mythology and history. It's depicted as a crow with three legs and was said to live inside the sun. When Emperor Jimu, the first emperor of Japan, was on his legendary journey, it's said that the sun goddess Amaterasu sent the Yatagarasu as a guide, and thanks to its aid, Jimu achieved victory in battle. However, Japan is not the only, and definitely not the first Asian country, to have a holy three-legged crow in their history. Under different names, you'll find tales of a similar bird in Korea and China, which is where the myth seems to originate, as well as others. There are Chinese tales of a bird called the Sanzu Wu, which translates to three-legged crow, or also the Jin Wu, which translates as golden crow. The story behind this sun-dwelling bird is that once upon a time there were ten separate sun crows, and each day one of them would fly around the world, with each of them taking a turn which gives us a day and night cycle. However, supposedly one day all ten crows would come at once, causing the entire world to burn. So the legendary archer, Hu Yi, grabbed his bow and shot down nine of them, leaving us with only one sun. While Megami Tensei mostly focuses on the Japanese depiction of this bird, there are a few things worth mentioning. For starters, there is a completely separate demon in Megaten that is in a direct reference to the Chinese Sun Crow story, and it's called Huang Yao, which merely translates as Firebird. Which I guess is fitting, because this thing looks more like a dove or a pigeon than a crow but its compendium entries do match up with the Chinese myth, and we can clearly see that, yes, it has three legs, and carries a small sun in a lantern on its back. According to one of my friends in China, the character on its lamp can mean fierce, but it can also mean ominous. Frankly, I was expecting her to say it just meant, like, bird or sun or something, but there we go. It should also be mentioned that while Yatagarasu is most famous for being a crow with three legs, None of the ancient Japanese texts actually describe it that way. It just kind of became a cultural assumption. China has a sun crow, and so do we. Theirs has three legs, so ours probably does too. Even with the differences in mythology and culture, many physical aspects of it were just shared between various countries. Yatagarasu's compendium entry from Shin Megami Tensei Liberation D2 refers to them as a divine creature in Japanese lore. They are three-legged birds sent by Amaterasu to help humans and are said to have helped Emperor Jinmu claim victory. Because of their divinity, some without faith are driven mad at their sight. Though I think that last bit may just be a friendly reminder not to stare at the sun. Design-wise, Yatagarasu is... It's a three-legged crow. It looks like a crow, but with three legs instead of two. Most crows only have two legs, but the Yatagarasu has three. It also has a necklace with three magatama on it, which are often connected to religion and spirituality in Japan. And I'm assuming there are three to represent Yatagarasu's big threeness. I think if it had eight, that would have been pretty interesting given the literal translation of Yatagarasu. The only major difference between its original and modern design is that the beads were changed from a sort of beige color to a red, and the crow itself seems a little bit darker. Yatagarasu has had two different devil children or demikids designs, neither of which have three legs. The original one looked like a villain in a Darkwing Duck Goes to Japan episode, and then the one you'd recognize if you play demikids is called War Crow. This one looks more like a traditional crow, and it keeps the trio of Magatama, as well as riding on a black ball of energy that I'm assuming is a mini sun of some sort. As far as game history goes, Yatagarasu has been around for quite some time, but generally speaking, doesn't really ruffle many feathers. In fact, the largest role Yatagarasu is known for is one where it doesn't even make a direct appearance as a demon. In both of the Raido Kuzunoha games, Soulless Army and King Abaddon, Raido is granted his title by a widespread holy organization known as the Yatagarasu. Although there are a couple of demons throughout the game that do refer to them as the Crow. 
Most of your communication with the Yatagarasu is done through their herald at the Shinoda Shrine, who plays small roles in the plots and in the sequel will hand out the occasional case file. In the training halls, Raido is often faced with a giant tree with three trunks, most likely as a nod to the three-legged crow itself. The only time we actually see a three-legged crow in the Raido games is when you're filling out forms like when you type in your name. At the very end of Soulless Army, a post credit scene shows a crow with green eyes watching over Raido, which may represent the Yatagarasu, though this crow does not have three legs. One extra note regarding Soulless Army is that the final boss of Chapter 5 are the twins Abihiko and Nagasunehiko, the latter of which is who Emperor Jinmu was able to defeat after being given the Yatagarasu's aid from Amaterasu, so it's quite fitting that Raido, a summoner for the Yatagarasu, would fight him. In Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey and Strange Journey Redux, if players use the password option and type HELP ME in all caps, they will be granted a unique Yatagarasu with skills it doesn't normally have, like Tetrakarn, Makarakarn, and Mana Aid. If you're lawful or chaotic, while collecting the cosmic eggs towards the end of the game, a trio of Yatagarasu is guarding the one located inside Sector Botes, and is a much easier boss fight than who you have to deal with if you're currently neutral. Yatagarasu also plays a small role in Shin Megami Tensei Liberation D2. During A Heaven with Demons, the fourth episode of the Intermission chapter, which you may remember we talked about on the Year Longer episode, one of the ingredients the Liberators needs to collect for the ritual is Crow's Beak, and naturally there's no better demon to get that from than Yatagarasu. Yatagarasu has had a pretty interesting run in the Persona series. Funny enough, in both Revelations titles, Persona and The Demon Slayer, Yatagarasu was simply localized as Crow. The funniest thing to me is they just can't seem to decide which arcana to put this thing in. I mean, to me, it's a Sun Crow, you'd think just keep it in the Sun Arcana. And for the most part, they have. But then in Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth, they made it Star, in Persona Q2 New Cinema Labyrinth, it's Death, and in Persona 5 Royal, they changed it from the Sun Arcana to the Consultant Arcana. But it does keep its status as a Sun Arcana Persona in Persona 5 Scramble, The Phantom Strikers. Speaking of Persona 5, if players send Yatagarasu to the electric chair, it creates a unique unisex armor known as the Black Wing Robe that's capable of reducing nuclear damage. In Persona 4 and Golden, Yatagarasu plays a small role in Margaret Social Link. To get to rank 7, she'll task the player with creating a Yatagarasu that knows Megiddo. There are many ways this can be done, but an easy one involves fusing Tao Ti with Kushi to make an Ares with Megiddo, and then fusing that Ares with Black Frost. And so there you have it, Yatagarasu, the canonized three-clawed crow of Corona whose cause carry over combat. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.